Filipinos in the World Cup and Rowena Guanzon says time's up. This is the Ryan Rambles Recap. Let's get ready to rumble! Somehow in a country obsessed with basketball, a football team had the chance to make history. Somehow in a country dominated by male sports, the Filipina booters were one win away from making the final four of the AFC Asian Cup and one win away from qualifying for the World Cup. Something that the men's team has never ever done. And the women's team only made it past the group stages once. This year's group stages started out pretty strong. Unang kalaban ng Pilipinas ang Thailand, ang bansang nakatalo sa atin 12 straight times. And match number 13 almost seemed like a draw. At least hindi talo, ba? But thanks to a late goal by Chandler McDaniel, we finally beat them. But in the next game, tinambakan tayo ng Australia, 0-4. to four. Revenge daw kasi Australian yung coach natin. But the next game after that, tinambakan naman natin ang Indonesia, 0 to 6. And so on January 30, eto na. Philippines versus Taiwan. History could finally be made. Kung natalo tayo, may pag-asa pa namang mag-qualify para sa World Cup, pero kung panalo, qualified na nga, pasok pa sa final 4. Kaya naman nagpista yung mga Pinoy nung naka-goal si Quinley Quezeda. But then towards the end of the game, our hearts were broken by Julie Ping's late goal. Kaya naman, eto na. Penalty shootout. Kung si Chandler McDaniel ang nagpakita noong kalaban natin ang Thailand, yung kapatid naman niya ang nagpakitang gilas kalaban ang Taiwan. Yung goalkeeper nating si Chelsea with two clean saves and a goal of her own. But it was Serena Bolden who scored the final goal, cementing her name in Filipino history books. As we finally qualified for the World Cup. So what does this say about Philippine sports? The fact that it's the women's team, not the men's team, who qualified for the World Cup. And the fact that it was Haydarin Diaz who gave us our first gold medal in the Olympics. Or even someone like Marjolin Didal, who placed 7th in the skateboarding competition even if we had no world-class skate parks. Hindi ko naman sinasabi na may conspiracy laban ang female athletes ng Pilipinas. I think the whole EJ Obiena issue proves that the treatment towards male athletes isn't that great either. But it seems like on the international stage, the future of Filipino sports is female. I think it's high time to give them the recognition they deserve and give them the media coverage they deserve so that young women around the Philippines will be encouraged to take up sports. Sobrang kalakokan kasi na si Jack Animam malapit ng hindi mag-basketball dahil takot siyang tawagang lesbian. Jack is a beast. And honestly, I think she'll make the WNBA before even Kai Soto makes the NBA. She's that good and she almost didn't play the sport at all. But also this week was the semi-final match against Korea. And despite a bunch of awesome saves by Chelsea McDaniel, we still lost 2-0. But I don't think we should be ashamed of this. I think we should be proud that the 64th ranked football team in the world put up a pretty good fight against the 18th ranked team in the world. I mean, we still have a year and a half before the World Cup actually starts. And now that the team has media recognition, now that people actually care, I think a lot can change. And I'm so excited for 2023 to see what these awesome women can do. But from some strong women on the pitch, let's move on to a strong woman on the court. But not a basketball court, the Comelec court. Earlier this week, Comelec Commissioner Guanzon finally retired. And she went out with style. Guns blazing against a certain college dropout. Which honestly reminded me of Kobe Bryant's last game. Where he dropped 60 points against my favorite team, the Utah Jazz. And against our best player at the time, a college dropout by the name of Gordon Hayward. But at least Gordon Hayward made his mark on Butler, the school he attended. Where he almost made one of the most amazing shots in college history. And the reason he left was to chase his NBA dream. 
but Commissioner Guanzon went after a different kind of college dropout. The kind that failed his classes that were paid for by the Philippine government. A college dropout who is currently running for president right now, but is facing a disqualification case. Commissioner Guanzon released a 24-page separate opinion. Pero ang daming galit sa kanya na dapat mag-shut up na lang daw siya and let the Comelec decide na yung ginagawa raw niya pwedeng ma-affect yung decision ng Comelec kaya madaya raw siya. Pero ang dami ring nasa side ni Guanzon. Sabihin natin nag-order kayong almasal ng pamilya nyo, ba? Diba? Tapos yung tanong, Makdo, o Jollibee. At 8am pa lang, boto mo na ang Jollibee. Pero yung kapatid mo, hindi maka-decide. Tapos kailangan mo nang umalis ng 12 noon kasi may trabaho ka. Malamang kung mga 11am na tapos hindi pa rin bumoto yung kapatid mo, magagalit ka kasi hindi ka makakakain. Kaya rin galit si Commissioner Guanzon. Sa tingin niya, hinintay lang na mag-retire siya para hindi ma-count ang kanyang boto. At may point naman siya. Ayon sa rules ng Comelec sa Section 8, Rule 18, special cases should be resolved in 5 days. January 7, was the hearing that Marcos didn't attend kasi may COVID daw siya. Kahit nung January 8, andun siya kasama si Paul Soriano at si Sara Duterte, nag-shoot ng kanilang campaign commercial. Pero sige, dahil 3 cases yon, sabihin natin 3 times 5, 15 days. E dapat Jan 25 may results na. That's a week before Commissioner Guanzon was set to retire. But according to the Comelec spokesperson, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Ultimately, when you're writing a decision to a complex case, you want the decision maker to be taking all of the facts into consideration. You're not going to rush uh, a decision simply because you want to make some external deadline. At may mga case naman talaga sa Comelec na mas matagal sa one month ang decision. And in fairness, there were times where Guanzon did go too far. Like when she accidentally posted Commissioner Ferrolino's number on Twitter. At ang dami niya natanggap na hate texts and hate calls. But if we believe Commissioner Guanzon, she has every single right to be mad. Ayon sa kanya, may isang senador mula sa Davao na malapit kay President Duterte who's causing the delay. Ayaw niya muna sabihin sa publiko kung sino para daw may protection siya. Pero alam na ni Senate President Soto. But when you think about it, who really benefits from the delay? Si Marcos ba? Kung yung dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon ng delay ay para mabawasan ng votes, edi oo. Aside from Guanzon's vote, nawala rin ng boto si Commissioner Casquejo. At si Ferrolina na lang ang natira para bumoto. Or could it be na yung mga Duterte ang nakikinabang sa delay? Kasi kung madelay at madelay yung kaso at na-disqualify si Marcos pagkatapos niyang manalo ng presidency, yung VP ang papalit. And according to the most recent surveys, that person is Sara Duterte. But in either case, hindi naman si Guanzon ang pinakalugi rito. Pinakalugi ang Filipino people. And if you ask me, it does feel like there's something going on. Nawalan kasi ng dalawang boto. So whether or not you believe na intentional nga yung delay, it feels wrong. I mean, if we have three people who are supposed to defuse a bomb, tapos yung dalawa dun na wala, tama ba na isang tao na lang yung magde-defuse ng bomb? Parang hindi siguro. So tingin ko, baka sumabog ba yun? Uy mga Pinoy, ito na ang medisina Nagbabagong apoy, linagyan ng gasolina Kaya't tinatanong pa ba kung kanino at sino Ang tsak na puntahan sa kulturang Pilipino Ako na ang sagot, ang dakilang gamot 